It's day six of the Tour Divide, and here's a little recap to get you up to speed. We began this journey with lots of excitement and energy in Banff as 250 of us set off on this 2,700 mile route from Canada to Mexico. The weather was great on day one and the miles came easy. Things changed pretty drastically though on day two. Coco claims lived up to its reputation and then came the rain. On day three, the rain turned to snow and on days four and five, I froze my butt off. It hasn't been a total sufferfest though, not even close. The people who have come out to meet me have warmed my heart. Seriously, this has been my favorite part of the journey. It's amazing how a brief interaction with a kind soul can snap you out of a pity party. And I gotta say, riding with Gabrielle has brought me so much joy. I've got the official Tour Divide DJ with me. Yeah, buddy. All day, every day, man. <laughs> Ooh, it is by far the coldest morning. And I had about a bit of bad luck last night. My air mattress, the valve broke, so it didn't hold any air. So I was sleeping on cold cement. Oh, wow. I am so ready for warmer weather. <laughs> How did you sleep? Man, ah. Uh... It was like I had the mattress and I had a tent, so I was warm with a mattress on. <laughs> it was my the best night so far. <laughs> the best. Good for you! Yay! Somebody slept well. How how what how, how was yours? Um. Well, not as good. <laughs> not as good. That mattress is dead. Thank you. Wonderfully flat and uh, kind of cold cement. You ready to ride bikes, my friend? Oh yeah, I'm so I'm so stoked. It's it's I'm so stoked. I've never been that stoked in my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be stoked soon when it warms up. Yeah. <sighs> Was that? <laughs> <laughs> is this is this uh, uh, an easy or hard thing to do? I mean, when you're on your bike and you, the only thing you have to do is just pedal and you're warm because you're moving, it's kind of cool, you know? But the hardest part is everything in between. It's like waking up with the, I need to put my like super wet socks on because that's the only thing that I have and <laughs> I'm super cold and we have to keep going. This yeah. is like mentally, it's mentally draining, but it's part of it. But this is way, way harder than just pedal my bike. For sure. Yeah, this is not a Sunday ride back home. No. <laughs> I think it's official. I am allergic to my <laughs> sleeping bag. I think the down. Yeah, I look, yeah, I look great. You're like puffy. puffy I'm all face. puffy face. Ooh, yeah. It feels good to be moving, but it's also colder to be moving. <laughs> Oh man! My hands and my feet they are hurting for sure. <laughs> I cannot wait to start climbing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Day six, baby. Day six. No flatties, no crashies, no whammies. Hello. Oui, c'est ça. J'ai passé la journée avec hier. He's calling his girlfriend. She's wondering if he was okay. <laughs> yeah. I've been calling my mom multiple times a day. Not calling, but texting through the Garmin InReach Messenger. They, everybody's been looking at the weather. They know what's been happening out here. But today it's supposed to get better. But right now, it is by far the coldest morning. And uh, man, what a grind. I was just thinking, when I toured this in 2020, it was a joyride. It was so warm and comfortable and I was jumping in creeks every day this is a completely different game oh. but uh, I'm grateful for the experience you know it's a much different experience I didn't want to have the same experience I already had it the other one so this is a new one and this one is definitely challenging me pushing my limits 
and we're not even a week into it. You know, I was just looking at the mileage for yesterday. Only 70 miles. And I rode from 6 in the morning till 5 p.m. and went 70 miles. <laughs> Which is great that I, I covered some distance, but also way below what I thought I'd be able to do out here. And uh, man, I gotta pick it up if I want to stay with my 100 plus mile a day average. But it's just been so hard. Not because the pedaling is hard, but just the elements. Just miserable. <laughs> so it's a little demoralizing looking forward. Like, oh God, am I gonna be out here longer than I thought? Who knows? But I have to remember right in here, right now, this moment is what matters. I can't think ahead. I just gotta wake up every day, get on my bike and pedal and do my best. And that's, that's all I can do really. I think I can, I think I can. I think I can. Right there, that's the sun. That's the magic right it's there. It's barely hitting our faces, but man, it is just a boost. Mentally and physically to know that we're gonna have sun today. At least I think so. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't even looked at the forecast, but everybody said it was gonna be warmer today. Good job, Good buddy. Job. Look at that. Oh. We can see our shadows. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> it's been so long. I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> Woo! That is the real deal sun right there. That's the one we've been waiting for. There we go. Look at these. Beautiful snow cat mountains, fresh snow. It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Little darling, it's been a long, cold, lonely winter. <laughs> Here comes the sun. You can see the bushes are steaming. The bushes are also happy that the sun is out. <laughs> makes a, a world of difference like even if you, you hit the shadows of the trees you're like it's so cold just the shadows of the trees man Oh boy, look at these mountains in that far off distance. Ooh, shrouded in clouds. Yeah. You see a little bit of snow up there. <coughs> oh man. That's... Richmond Peak, we're coming for you. <laughs> Sharp left right here. No single track. This is the single track. Let's do this. It's pretty. I've already been through like three different ups and downs this morning of like, oh my God, this is so hard. What am I doing? Oh my God, this is amazing. Oh my God, this is so hard. This is so cold. I didn't sleep last night. What am I doing? I can't do this. <laughs> and that's, it's only 10 a.m. You know, I'm thinking right now, how cool would it be if all these little trees had Christmas ornaments on them? <laughs> Christmas Tree Alley. That's what this looks like.
Yum, yum. Put some of this in your water bottle. Save it for New Mexico. Uh, You're gonna want cold water that's there. A great idea. If mm -hmm. we if we go at this pace, I think it's gonna melt though. Mm. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna go fast now. Yeah! Oh, was that your was that your bag? My candy. Let's go get the candy. Can't leave without that. Da, 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 da. Finders keepers. My candy. That was pretty awesome, huh? That was the best. I'm glad we did this in the morning. Oh my God. When they say the Tour Divide is a mountain bike trail, this is pretty legit. Yeah. I mean, this is it right there. Enjoy it. There's not much more. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was the best moment of the Tour Divide for me. Like, I'm a mountain biker and this is like, I live for those moments, you know? And because you, you went through so much to get here, like it's even better. I mean, that was really special. Yeah, Thank that was so special. Much, I'm glad we got to share that. Oh yeah. Yeah, down Christmas tree alley. Oh. Hello. It was that campground right over there where I met John and Mira in 2020. And that was an exciting moment. And then we rode a lot of the divide together. Such incredible memories of that experience. And that experience is kind of what has led to this experience. I wanna do the whole thing in one go. Look who's up and ready. Good morning, Mira, good morning. Okay. To the sea. Look at her go, look at her go. Ah, oh, it feels good to be riding with my Baja buddies again. John and Mira, I'm sending you some love. Your spirit is with me out here. Look at those big old puffy clouds. The last few days, I've just been looking at gray skies. Dark gray, rainy skies. You know how the world smells after a lot of rain? Well, that's how it smells right now. Just fresh and crisp and it's rejuvenating. All right, we are now in the town of Ovando. I love this little place and they love cyclists. You can camp wherever you want here. And we are headed right here to the stray bullet because we're hungry. Food is just so good when you've earned it. What do you have over here? Oh, look at that yumminess. And I love like breakfast any time of the day. So this is the dream right now. Yeah, this is the dream. Thank you, Stray Bullet, for the yumminess. In moments like this, when I'm so hungry, I have to remember to chew. <laughs> I'm just wolfing it down. No! So we've got Kathy here from Ovando. <laughs> We, we love this town and you love cyclists. How long have you been catering to cyclists? We started about 10 years ago when we had an ill cyclist and it was before cell phones. It was before there was only maybe 50 people in the race. Uh, helping her 
was fun. And so we got with ACA about how we could fix things up. What kind of amenities do you have for cyclists here? Okay, so if you want to spend the night, uh, we've got the jail. It's got two, uh, let's see, two rope beds, teepee with two cots and a sheep wagon with a, a, a mattress in it. And then the park up the road, if you want to use your tent, which is totally enclosed by electrical fencing. And then if you come in early enough, you can get a shower at the market and you can do your laundry at the market. And there's a restaurant here and a restaurant up the road and a, and a market. You're amazing. Oh, and I, that the Blackfoot Angler, carry emergency bicycle parts for those who break down and think they can't finish. And so I carry tires and loop and chains. And so what you're saying is you just got a whole bunch of love for us. That's the best way of putting it I've ever heard, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Really appreciate all the support. It means the world to us. We've had a rough couple days, cold and wet and freezing, so this warms our hearts. Uh, thanks for coming in. You guys make this place so much more exciting than it is all winter long. <laughs> <laughs> right on. I don't know what to say. Like we were like right at the rock bottom yesterday, and now we are up here oh God, you guys because You're of you. Me. No, it's <laughs> because of you. Can yeah. I have a hug? Yes, you can. Give me a hug. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bye, Ovando. Oh, Ovando. That was a much needed stop. We are feeling good. And now we have about 60 miles to where we want to go today. And where we're going is extra special. It's Barbara and John's Llama Ranch. I met them in 2020. They are the supreme trail angels of all the trail angels I've ever met. And ever since I met them, I've stayed in touch. And so they know we're coming, but it's gonna be kind of a late arrival because we still have 60 miles to go. So we've just been intercepted by a guy named Mark. He's not doing the race, but he's just out here loving life. That's it. You were saying you have to be outside how often? Uh, I need 30 or 40 days a year in nature, kind of non-stop, or I just don't feel right about myself. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joy, it's a pleasure, it fills me up, it allows me to do every other beautiful thing I love to do in life. Yeah, man. And if we encounter a bear, you're our guy. <laughs> that comes out so fast. You like that? That's pretty impressive. Isn't it? I've been practicing. Fire target. Like, if he does that in Canada, he goes to jail instantly. <laughs> well, yeah, oh yeah. God bless America. We're in the wild, America. wild west. Yes. Woo. I'm here. I'm doing it. I'm doing the tour divide. It's crazy. It is crazy. And I'm sure I'll have to pinch myself over and over and over for the rest of this adventure. But yeah, this is, this is a dream. Even when I'm uncomfortable and cold and complaining, it's still a dream. And I don't take it for granted that this is a pretty special opportunity. Hi guys. I'm now heading up Huckleberry Pass. You know what, I like the word huckleberry and I like huckleberries. <laughs> if you don't know what they are, they are a wild berry that grow, they grow here in Montana and Idaho, maybe some other Western states. And they make all sorts of yummy things out of it. My favorite is a huckleberry milkshake. Maybe I'll find one down the road, but they taste really good. Getting there, getting there. All right, my GPS says this is the top, so I'm gonna high five this tree. Bam, let's go down. I have absolutely horrible saddle sores. I usually don't get saddle sores. I'm guessing it's because I usually don't ride my bike 15 hours a day, um, but I've got some open wounds on my butt. Was that TMI? I'm sorry. 
So we're rolling into Lincoln. We're feeling a little exhausted. And these two wonderful ladies, yeah. Heather and Bonnie, are here waiting for us. How you doing? Good. It's so exciting to see Ryan <laughs> and be able to meet up with him. We've been chasing him all day. Oh, and He's just biking too fast for us. Oh, and you got beans. Oh, Thank yeah. you so much. This is incredible. Yeah. Oh. You You're are wonderful. incredible. Really? You went Thank through you hell. hell. I did go through hell to get here. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ladies, oh, thank you so much. You're incredible. Sorry if I smell bad. Uh, you don't stink. Do I don't stink? All right. Your, don't want you to have bad feelings about Montana. No, we definitely don't. We're loving it. Okay, Even though right. it's been cold and. Okay, and, I love you. Thank love you too. Me. Sorry we can't hang out longer. Don't. You know, one of the unfortunate things about this race for me personally is that I'm going 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 I would have loved to have spent more time with Bonnie and Heather back there but we gotta go you know we gotta get to the llama ranch before it gets too dark so I can hang out with John and Barbara you know if I was just touring this I would have hung out and gotten to know them better but uh, yeah at least we got a I got a quick hug and they were so sweet and kind to greet us and you know, maybe I'll come back someday and spend more time with all these wonderful humans. But for now, we're racing! And Gabrielle is back! Yeah, baby! It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Like, I was heartbreaking. Good job, Shadows! Woo! Woo, you're doing a great job! <laughs> Keep going! Keep going! Only 25 more miles! So Gabrielle and I are just grunting in pain and agony this is what they call the grind i think this is the grind We're for grinding sure for sure and it's just oh and it's not even that steep of a pass but man our legs are shot Whew. a little bit more 20 more miles I think I can. I think I can. Oh. Need to know that this guy didn't sleep last night. <laughs> I slept like 10 hours and you just keep going. Yeah. Even harder than me. Well, yeah. But you didn't sleep much before last night, so <laughs> we're all a little sleep deprived and our bodies don't work all that well when we don't get sleep. There's my man, Gabriel, going up the pass. He's making Canada proud. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. And at this point in the day, when it gets just a little too steep, you walk. You take your bike for a nice little evening walk. Oh my God, this is insane. This is so, so, hard so i might be having my lowest low of the trip so far this is unbelievably difficult for me right now i am so destroyed right now <laughs> i cannot wait to see barbara and john oh i need a hug hey there they are i can't believe it I need a hug so oh, bad. Man. Oh, so great to oh, see you. Man. I am destroyed. <laughs> uh, I doubt that. Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, Barbara, it's so, so good, good to, to see, you. see you. Oh my Gabriel? God. I'm Gabriel. Yeah, I I'm needed Gabriel. a hug. <laughs> Barbara just made me a vegetarian sandwich. Thank you, Barbara. You're, You're the welcome. best. You're welcome. And I have to say, this couch feels really good on my sore butt. I'll bet it does. <laughs> but let's not be filming that, Ryan. <laughs> so we are feeling a lot better. So good, in fact, that he's sitting in a warm cabin with a shirt off because we have a fire. Thank you, Barbara and John. They Thank are, you so much. They are like the supreme trail angels of the Great Divide mountain bike route. There were probably 20 people all in this area in various huts and cabins and teepees and tents. And they give everybody food and water and hot tea. And, and uh, 
I would have filmed more of the interactions with them, but when I right when I got here, I kind of fell apart and I would just laid on the couch and man, I needed some some love from them because today was hard, 120 miles up and down big mountains with this guy right here, my man, <laughs> the MVP from Canada. We're gonna sleep now. It's a little later than uh, when we went to bed last night, and but luckily I have a a mattress to sleep on. I need to go buy a air mattress. Whew. Yeah, man. Good night, brother. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Tomorrow's a new day. We'll see how my butt feels. That's my biggest worry right now. Good morning from Llama Ranch. What you can't see is that it is extremely cold. And look what we have here. Here's the llamas. Hi, buddy. All right, I have a saddle sore brother named Terry. How you doing, my friend? Yeah, good, Ryan, thank you. Yeah, I'm in a sort of similar position to you. I'm gonna have a bit of rest, a uh, bit of saddle sore on the butt, um, and I've got a prosthetic leg as well with a bit of cut on, um, which has caused me other ankle to swell up a bit. Oh, wow. Jeez, and so what's it like riding with a prosthetic leg? Uh, I've been doing it for years now. So I was um, actually, I was world champion cyclist uh, team sprint uh, back in 2012. And then um, I've been away doing the mountains and stuff like that, but I've came back to hopefully be the first disabled person to ever do the Tour Divide. Yeah, so I just put a normal shoe on it. Uh, it's got a little bit of uh, tolerance there. But yeah, it, it's worked quite well, to be honest. Um, riding wise, yeah, I can ride really well. Um, with a stump, it just, just fits straight in there. And then uh, that's just where it's got the cut on the back at the minute. Ah, uh, so, so you've got saddle sores there too. <laughs> yeah. So, but, yeah, no, it's um, just flipped straight in, so that works well, to be honest. I, I'm used to it now. What's the hiker bike like with uh, that leg? Incredibly difficult. I feel sort of um, pushing a bike with one leg up, you know, 20% through rocks, I found really, really difficult, and that's what's caused the damage on the left leg. Um, it's something we've got to do to do Tour Divide, but, however, yeah, incredibly difficult, but it's... It, it can't not be done, can it? If I want to do this, I'd do the hiker bike. We're going to do this. Exactly that. We'll get to the end. <laughs> That's what it's about. Beers at Mexico. Thank you, Super Cozy Cabin. You saved the day for sure. And here is the Barbara and John philosophy. They don't take donations for what they provide, but they just want you to pay it forward. And they are some of the kindest humans I've ever met. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Oh. It was wonderful to see you and thank you for spending so much time. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, oh, I needed so this. I needed this so much. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> we love seeing you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're what you make this special. You make this magical. Mm. You know. So do you. Yeah, yeah, I guess we're all part of it, but <laughs> yeah. I mean without you, I mean a lot of us would be suffering. Uh, you. And you give me hope for humanity, you know. <laughs> That's really oh, sweet. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. I'll come back another day when I'm not so wrecked. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we were we were wrecked. We were wrecked. Oh, oh, I love you guys. so much. Okay. You're amazing. Thank I really you. don't want to put my seat, my butt on this seat. Oh, oh, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. Oh, bye! Woo! Okay, here we, here we go. And my buddy Rod's gonna join us for a few miles. Oh, yeah. yeah, buddy. Bye, Llama Ranch. Bye -bye. Oh, no flatties, no whammies, no butt sores. Yeah. No more. It is 10:30 in the morning. By far our latest start, but also by far the most important rest I've had on this trip. Last night I slept so well after having not really slept at all the night before when I slept on frozen concrete. Oh, gonna head into Helena today, the capital of Honduras. Honduras, I don't know where I am, Montana. That <laughs> goes to show how messed up my brain is. And uh, I need to buy a sleeping pad because I'm not gonna have a cozy cabin every night for the rest of the ride, so. And take it easy, rest my saddle sores, and take another short day, and 
from here on out, then maybe I'll, I'll feel better. But I am so incredibly grateful for Barbara and John's kindness. So we just caught up with Noah from Toronto. How you doing, buddy? Good. Holding in there. Holding in there. <laughs> How's your experience been? It's been, uh, I think, mixed. The first uh, five days was really rough, but since the weather has changed, I think that has kind of made it, and then I think my body just accepted what's going on, so feeling good today. How do you get through the hard parts? Um, just tell myself, like, you know, we can walk in the, the next, uh, at the next tree and then just keep telling myself that every single time. Yeah. Um, and then a good friend texted me the other day saying, uh, one climb at a time, one day at a time. And I've just been saying that over and over in my head every day. So I think just words of encouragement. Right on, brother. You look good. <laughs> Do it for Thank Canada. <laughs> I'm with two Canadians. He looks fresh, man. He looks like his first day. Yeah. <laughs> Looking good. Wow. When I started out the day, I felt great. I was like, yeah, I feel strong again. And now two hours later, I'm like, oh God, I feel weak. And I've gone 15 miles total. How's my French Canadian brother doing today? Dude, I, I'm hurt. My knee hurt, my back hurt, my butt hurt, and my legs. But I'm with the coolest guy around, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Let's freaking do it. I don't know how cool I am right now. Man, <laughs> I'm pretty busted up myself. <laughs> oh, I love this guy. Always smiling. He's got a good attitude. <laughs> My saddle sores are so bad, it feels like somebody is holding a blowtorch to my ass. <laughs> I can laugh about it only because it's so ridiculous. Oh, it hurts. And the only time I can film is when I'm sitting down. I can't stand up and film, so I sit down for a little bit to film. Ow, 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 ow. God, I'm wrecked. <laughs> walking a little funny and sitting a little funny. I am in Helena, Montana, the capital. And I'm not gonna go any further on the Tour Divide. It has been an excruciatingly hard decision to make because I obviously thought that I would get to the finish line and I'm not even close. But uh, I went 40 miles today and it took everything I had. I cannot sit down on my bicycle. And it's just gotten worse and worse every day. Just full on open wounds. And I've been putting stuff on them and trying to make them better. And the truth is with saddle sores, they need, for them to heal, you just need to not ride your bike. And uh, yeah, I, I just don't have the time. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to say this out loud. It's hard to say I'm quitting because I've done a lot of hard things in my life and I usually find a way to push through them. I think of myself as a physically and mentally tough person, but this ride has uh, pushed me to my absolute limits. The good side of that is this is what I wanted. I wanted to experience something completely new, completely different than my other experience on the Great Divide when I was touring it for fun. And these first seven days were a wild ride of emotions. Whew. 
you know, I've gone back and forth with this decision so many times today on my bike. Should I, should I not? Should I do this? What does this mean? What does this mean if I quit? What are the implications? What are the lessons I'm learning? You know, um, and I just have to take care of myself. You know, this experience has been so stressful for me. And when I bike tour, it's not stressful. It's a, enjoyable. <laughs> That's, that's the point of it, you're on a tour. And I just really don't like the feeling of bike racing. I have found out through this experience that I am not a bike racer. I can run ultra marathons and thrive in those conditions, but not on a bike. And it's just, it's been so stressful and I've been so rushed. Like you get into a town and it's go, 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 and you buy your food and you pack your bike and you just go and all these wonderful people are coming out to, to meet me and say hi and I don't even have time to spend with them really and i'd love to get to know all of them and all of you and uh it's just it's i'm really i'm not at, at ease in any way except for right now this is the first moment where i'm just kind of like ah i'm at my friend's house here in helena i just took a shower my lips are all like chapped and dry and like opening my mouth i feel all the cracks in the edges of my mouth and I'm, I'm just whooped I'm destroyed and the idea of going 2,000 more miles is just daunting and usually on my adventures I take them day by day by day <clears throat> and that helps mentally break them up but I can't even sit on my bike <clears throat> so my quads are so <clears throat> sore because I've been standing up all day <laughs> And uh, I just don't see how it's possible to keep going. And so that's why I'm, I'm calling it. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of emotions around all this. And I have so much respect for everybody in this race who are out there fighting and charging and moving forward. It's absolutely incredible what these people are doing whether you're at the back or the front or other people who are calling it quits like me, <clears throat> if you've made it to the starting line of this race and you're going for it, I have so much respect because it is not easy at all. You know, I feel in a way that I'm letting you down and that's hard for me because I know so many people are out there cheering me on from afar and watching my dot and to be ending it so early is hard because I, I I want to be there for you. I want to perform, but not this time. I'm proud of myself for getting this far. I really am. And I'm sure soon enough I'll be bummed out that I didn't get to the fence in Antelope Wells and didn't experience the rest of Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico. I mean, most of the race. I, Barely, I'm barely going, <laughs> barely started. <sighs> yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say other than I love y'all. I really do. Oh, there's sad Ryan. And here's happy Ryan. Today is August 21st. That means I have been home now for two months exactly from when I decided to quit the Tour Divide. It's been two months and in some ways it seems like a very short amount of time and in other ways it seems like I've lived a lifetime since I decided to leave the Tour Divide early. It has been a roller coaster of emotions and I'm not gonna go into all of that because I made an entire video about this which I will link down below. But I will say that now, after having time and looking back at this footage, this footage and creating these videos, I have an overwhelming sense of, of gratitude for the experience. And as I always say, in all of my adventures, not just this one, it's the people. It's the people that truly made this special. In just seven days, I met a lot of kind-hearted humans, and I'm really glad that I got to share some of their stories with you. And just as an update, Gabriel did finish. He finished in 26 days. 
Alyssa finished in 24 days. That young guy, Eden, who I interviewed on day one, he finished it in 20 days, a 15 year old. Who else? Oh, uh, Courtney, the Australian that I met on day one, she finished in like 22 days. And so I have a lot of love and respect for them and everybody else who is out there <laughs> giving this challenge a go. And you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the experience. I really am. I learned a lot. And since being home, I've had lots of time to think. And uh, I'm excited for my next adventure, whatever that's going to be. But you can count on me that I'm gonna be back on my bike soon enough exploring the world and connecting with wonderful humans. And I wanna thank you all for all of your love and support. I got thousands of messages from people all over the world when I decided to quit. Supportive messages, loving messages. It really made me feel made me feel good about my decision. And it was the right decision because I came home and I was diagnosed with prostatitis and it took a while for my saddle sores to heal. But I'm all good now. I'm ready to rock and roll. So here's a pitch for my channel. If you like my videos, if they bring value to your life, please consider joining my Patreon. You will get early release videos with no ads. You will have direct access to chat with me about anything. And every now and then I do these really fun virtual burrito dinners on Zoom where I just chat with all my patrons and we have a, a good old time. I also have some merch if you're into that. And with all of my merch that I sell, I donate everything to nonprofits who are doing good things in the world. So I have some shirts, I have the really cool Olay socks, and I even have a book about my very first bikepacking adventure from Honduras to Boulder. And as always, I hope these videos have motivated you in some way, shape, or form to get outside and challenge yourselves. That really is the goal with everything that I make, and I hope you've had a wonderful summer of your own adventures. And once again, my friends, I love you, you're amazing, and uh, I will see you next time on YouTube doing some other fun thing that hopefully brings a smile to your face. And once again, I keep on saying that once again, thank you for watching this series, and uh, we'll see you down the road. And don't forget to get off your couch and get out there.